In the following training video, I'm going to take a look at a behavior-based approach to goal setting and goal achieving. Now I'm going to assume at least to some degree that you've already been through uh, your fair share of goal setting or goal achievement type of training. Uh, maybe you've already set some goals for yourself. I'm sure you have. Maybe you've worked towards and achieved some of the ones you've already been kind of hoping for in your life. And like any good goal setter, you're probably setting some new ones that you want to achieve in the coming months and years. What we're going to do today is kind of flip the whole paradigm of goal setting on its head and look at goal setting from a different angle. This is a particular approach that I find quite useful for myself and a number of people have agreed with me that when you look at a behavior-based approach to goal setting, it just gives you a new way of attacking an old problem. So without further ado, let's dive into this discussion right now. Your traditional goal setting approach kind of looks at a timeline, so to speak. So if you were to look at today, mark it on the calendar, whatever day, whatever day it may be, and some date in the future, and we can see our little arrow going across here to signify that, at some point in the future, you want to achieve some kind of result. And in order to make sure that result becomes a reality, you set it as a goal for yourself. Now, this could be a goal of something you want to achieve a week down the, the road, or it could be a year, or it could be a number of years down the road. It really depends on what it is you're trying to achieve. Obviously, the magnitude of the goal will usually have a pretty big role on the amount of time required. If you're trying to go from maybe making $50,000 a year to a million, that's not necessarily going to happen over, overnight uh, without some extreme luck. There's a lot of planning and a whole lot of work that goes into that. So setting a goal to do that maybe in the next five to 10 years is a little bit more realistic per se than maybe three months. Uh, you get the idea here. The goal setting uh, traditional approach focuses on some kind of outcome in the future. Now let's take a look at a chart here. Across the top we have short term, medium term and long term goals. And I've picked some arbitrary time frames here, but you'll probably agree that these are fairly standard. Let's say a short term goal would be anything you want to achieve in the next zero to three months. A medium term, four to 12 months, basically up to a year. And then longer term goals will focus on the one to five year range uh, in terms of the timeline. And then across the uh, vertical axis here, we've got being goals, which really deals with attitude, how I want to be on a certain, uh, in, within a certain goal time frame, uh, things I want to do or actions I want to take, and having goals, i.e. results. So these are sort of the three different areas that we can set goals and then we can decide when we want to achieve those type of goals based on our timelines that I just discussed. So let's look at some examples uh, that you may see when it comes to setting these type of goals. I've, I've filled in the chart here. I'm going to go through it quickly top to bottom. When we talk about being goals, how we want to be, the attitude we want to carry, there's really no timeline on this. You can start being the type of person you want to be today. And if you keep that going, well, you've certainly achieved that being goal. But let's just look at some random or uh, common, let's say, goals that people might say that they want to be in their life. Somebody who expresses gratitude, somebody who smiles and is happy. They're excited, they're motivated, maybe they have empathy. Those could be all short-term goals that you could set right now as uh, this is the type of person I want to be starting today or at least within the next few weeks and months. Um, Again, I've picked random time frames here. I also, in the future, would like to be more loving, be kind, help other people. Longer term, I'd like to recognize others or be stress-free or at least reduce stress and to laugh daily. Again, being happy and expressing that type of happy attitude. So as you can see, being goals, attitude type goals, even though we've kind of arbitrarily picked some timelines here, they really aren't bound by time. You can be any of those things at any given moment in your life, and you can choose to keep that attitude going forward. So we've really just time boxed these for no other reason than just our example here. Doing goals. Now this is a little bit more concrete. I've picked again some random examples. So let's say I have a short-term goal of I'd like to read a book weekly, or I'd like to work out daily. Uh, those are very short-term goals of things that I want to do starting today and to keep that habit going. Medium term, maybe I want to learn to play a full song on a guitar or write a book. Well, I can't necessarily do all of that, you know, today or in the next couple of weeks. It's going to take some time, but a, 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 re a reasonable time frame here could, let's say, four or five, six months. Yeah, I could probably learn how to play a, a song on a guitar in that time frame. I could probably write a book in three, six, nine month type of time frame. 
Longer term, maybe I want to travel the world. I can't just start traveling today. Well, maybe I can if I have the money and the resources, but it might be something I need to plan. So let's say we set that as a longer term, quote unquote, doing goal uh, that I'd like to travel the world in a couple of years time from now. Gives me some time to save up some money, plan my route, plan where I'm going to go, maybe some people to come with me and so on. Learning a language like Spanish, as an example, again, can I do that overnight? Can I do the next three months? Mm, chances are slim. But if I dedicate to myself to doing this, to doing this goal over the next few years, I could probably achieve it with a high degree of proficiency. Having goals. Now, this is probably the biggest, most common one. Most goal setting programs focus on outcomes or results, as, as we discussed on the previous slide. Uh, in the short term, I'd like to have extra money. Now, obviously, if, it's, if you're a good goal setter, you're going to pick a specific amount you'd like to achieve. Uh, but this is an example. You know, in the next three months, maybe I want an extra $5,000 or $3,000 for some kind of project. Or I'd like to lose some weight, a specific amount of weight, or weigh a certain amount of pounds uh, by a certain date. Uh, those are short-term goals, as an example, uh, of things we'd like to have or outcomes we'd like to achieve in our life. Medium term, buy a car, get a promotion. Longer term, maybe get married or buy a home. All of these types of goals, particularly that bottom row, are things that we see all of the time in traditional goal setting programs. Not quite so often on the first uh, horizontal row here with the being goals. It's not necessarily something very many of us think about when it comes to goal setting programs. And the reason I bring that up is for the following slide here. If I break this down, if you look at uh, the same chart and you put a box around this section here, the things we want to do and the things we want to have in the next, in the medium to long term range, this is where we would traditionally see uh, a normal or a quote unquote traditional goal setting program really have the student focus. So if you're focusing on things you'd like to achieve, maybe a business that you want to start or, you know, that buying a home goal, a traditional goal setting pro program would have you write that down and start mapping out the steps and actions you need to take to make that happen in the next whatever it is. Maybe for you, you pick two years. Well, how do you make sure that you can buy a home in two years? You go two years into the future, you write it down, then you work backwards. What do I need to do today in the coming weeks and months and years to make sure that vision becomes a reality? Here's the difference now. When we start talking about behavior-based goals, we're focusing more on this section of the chart. We're focusing on shorter term, goals that deal with how we want to be and the things we want to do. Now, the difference here is that instead of focusing on the results, we're focusing on the activity. And I realize here that this is really, it could be semantics. It could be just, a, again, a new way of looking at an old problem, but that's the key. That's the point here is a lot of people will set goals. As an example, maybe it's, I'd like to open my own business a year from now and have it successfully generating X number of dollars in revenue within my first three months. Well, that's a great goal to set, but what if you don't hit it? You could do all kinds of work and then feel completely unsuccessful. Behavior-based goals programs focus on the short-term being and doing activities that you can write down and check off so that you have that feeling of success. If you become the type of person that focuses on behavior-based goals and you achieve those goals on a daily basis, over the long term, you will eventually have no choice but to hit those results-based traditional goals. But a behavior-based goals program allows you to generate that feeling of success on a short-term basis. So instead of really focusing on, hey, two years from now, I want this amount of money, we're going to focus on, hey, today I'm going to express gratitude. Today I'm going to do a workout, and that is going to be my goal. That's going to be my focus. And every single day, I am going to achieve my goal, and I can focus on it, check it off, and feel successful day after day after day. Do that enough times, your long-term goals will begin to manifest themselves. So let me break down and sort of compare these two models of traditional goal setting versus behavior-based goal setting uh, so you have a bit more understanding of how it works and then we can get into some examples, some concrete examples that you can look at and maybe even copy or at least model and borrow for your own goal setting adventures. So a traditional goal setting approach Again, long term, maybe my example earlier about starting your own business. It's, you know, a year from now, I want to have a business running that earns $5,000 a month in revenue. I don't know. Random example here. Traditional goal setting would look at that and say, okay, your goal is in 12 months, have a business making $5,000 a month. Problem is that 
Between now and then, there's going to be 365 days where you're looking at your calendar, you're looking at your notes, and you're saying, have I achieved my goal, my goal yet? And the answer is no. And you're constantly focusing on the fact that you're not there. There's a lack of feeling of success until the goal is achieved. With a behavior-based goal-setting program, you have the opportunity to achieve goals daily. So we acknowledge that, yes, we have a longer-term vision, and yes, it's going to take a long time, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens between now and then. And if I actually set mini micro behavior-based goals to focus on every single day, I can create a feeling of success. So if you have a year to pull this thing off, there will be goals that you can achieve every single day that slowly but surely move you towards that long-term goal. But now you have the opportunity to actually feel the success because you do something daily and you check off the fact that, hey, I hit five, six, seven of my behavior-based goals today, and I know that move myself closer to this longer-term vision that we set. The next piece is that with traditional goal-setting programs, going back to the business example once again, uh, what if a problem comes up? There's many variables that come into play. You wanna launch your business or you wanna have it making $5,000 a month a year from now, maybe technology changes. Maybe you, know, you have a website or some kind of tech-based business where the technology you built your whole business on breaks changes, becomes unstandardized, or something becomes wrong with it, or it gets hacked. I don't know what the variable may be, but there's dozens and probably hundreds that could come into play. And now what was originally a 12 month goal suddenly becomes bumped to 15 months or 16 months or even longer because you simply couldn't anticipate or plan for these kind of problems. Uh, again, now your goal, whole goal setting program is altered. You're still feeling unsuccessful. Whereas with behavior-based goals, you have full control over the variables. These goals are focused on how you're going to be and the activities you're going to take on a daily basis. There are no variables. You either perform these activities and you behave these ways or you didn't. You have full control over it and nothing can prevent you from being successful with behavior-based goals. Outcome-based goals, not so much. Many variables may prevent you from actually achieving those and you can't always anticipate them. Think about the last time you tried to do something really huge in your life. Did it happen on the exact date you said it was going to happen? Chances are it took a lot longer. It happens to all of us. Finally, uh, some goals can be achieved with brute force, right? So think about the fact that with traditional goal setting, maybe you give yourself uh, a goal of, I'm gonna write a book in three months. And you, you, know, you put it out on Facebook, you get accountability partners, you hold, you, know, you hold yourself to the fire and you get it done. Uh, you're working under an extreme amount of pressure, but you force yourself to get it done. And at the end of it, you go, look what I did. This is amazing. I wrote a book in three months. This is so cool. The problem is that how sustainable is that type of behavior really? Uh, is it something that you constantly want to do, constantly want to put yourself under that pressure? Uh, probably not. It's probably not the type of habit you can sustain on a long-term basis. It goes in fits and spurts, but you're not going to behave like that all of the time. Behavior-based goals take a little bit more of a long-term approach, and it focuses on long-term positive habits. Let's take the example really quickly of a behavior-based goal that says every single day, starting now, uh, I'm going to exert a high amount of energy. I'm going to be a high energy person. You set that to be your goal today and tomorrow and every day for this entire week. For seven days, you can look at that and say, I'm going to do this. And either you did it or you did not do it at the end of each day. You can check that off. Well, if you stick to that goal and you check it off every single day for a week and then two weeks and then two months and so on, you're actually forming a positive long-term habit that will inevitably help you reach any long-term goal that you want to set. So it allows you to focus on the habit change and the root cause of these longer-term big vision goals that you want to set. So that is the main difference here between traditional goal setting and behavior-based goal setting. So now we can take a look at some specific examples that hopefully help you relate to this. Here's one that most people will get and understand and relate to increasing sales by, I'm picking a random number here, $10,000. That might be $10,000 per month, per year, depending on your business, whatever. That's the traditional goal and how we time box it really depends on how quickly you want to achieve it. With a behaviors based goal setting approach, rather than focusing so much on did we achieve this 10,000 or not, we can focus on the daily approach of how we want to be and what are we going to do to inevitably get to that dollar figure. So I can make sure that I'm energetic and I'm positive in terms of how I'm going to be on a daily basis. 
And I can look at the end of my day and check off. Was I energetic and was I positive for the most part today? If so, uh, I've achieved both of my goals in that particular column. How about my doing goals, actions I'm going to take or activities I'm going to perform? I've just picked some random ones here. Talk to 10 customers every single day, make three posts on social media, obviously related to what I sell, uh, and maybe attend a live or a virtual event every single day until I reach this goal. Now, those are, again, doing goals, behavior-based goals that we can execute every single day. And again, at the end of my day, before I close down my computer or Go to bed for the night, I can check off these boxes. Did I talk to 10 customers? Did I make these posts? Did I attend this event that I said I was going to attend? If I can go five for five, I'm going to feel very successful and I'm gonna create a long-term behavior or habit here that will inevitably get me to my increase in sales. Whether I hit that 10,000 in the time-boxed, result-oriented uh, goal that I, I wanted or not is kind of independent or irrelevant at this point. Uh, I can say that I successfully achieved all five of my behavior-based goals for the day. And that leaves me, feel, uh, leaves me uh, exiting this day feeling pretty good about myself. So that's one example. Here's another one, more on the fitness side of things. I wanna bench press 225 pounds. That could be a giant goal for somebody who's just getting started and maybe can barely lift the bar, right? Uh, well, it'd be nice to say, hey, I wanna be able to bench press 225 in a year or six months but I can't necessarily guarantee that, that, that my body is going to work that way. I can certainly do uh, the following in terms of my behavior-based goals to work towards that. So I could set a daily goal from a being perspective to be thankful for my health and the fact that I can even bench press at all uh, is a great goal to set, uh, feeling thankful every day. And how about the, the goal of being confident? to have a belief in myself. So those are two goals, behavior-based goals I can set and achieve every single day to feel successful. From a doing perspective, I can stick to my prescribed meal plan, I can do my daily fitness plan, and maybe some yoga and stretching, I'm just again picking some random activities here. But once again, five behavior-based goals that I can achieve and check off every single day to feel successful. Whether I achieve that 225 outcome-based goal in the time frame that I set remains to be seen, but these behavior-based goals are ensuring that eventually I will achieve and probably surpass that goal in the long run while feeling successful and not that I've kind of missed out on something. Next, becoming fluent in Spanish. I referenced this one earlier, right? Uh, I'd like to say, hey, in a year I'm going to be fluent in Spanish, but it kind of depends on a lot of other things, especially if I have other goals. Maybe I've got family commitments, a job, and so on. Uh, whether I'm fluent in Spanish in a year or not remains to be seen, but there are goals I can set from a behavior-based goals perspective and achieve every day. I can be excited to learn. I can be grateful that my mind works and I'm able to study this stuff to begin with. There's two goals already completed for the day. From a doing perspective, I can do my daily lessons, whatever it may be for the, St the Spanish program I'm taking. Uh, I can read Spanish articles to get my mind used to, to actually looking at this type of text and reading it both maybe in my brain, and speaking it out loud as well. So here again are five behavior-based goals that I can set and achieve on a daily basis to feel successful with the inevitable result being that I'll become fluent in Spanish. But again, it, remove the, it removes the charge from us needing to achieve this particular goal within a particular time that we may not be able to control. We can certainly control these behavior-based goals and make sure that we achieve them every day. Next. Eliminating student debt. This is a big one for a lot of people these days. Uh, it would be nice to eliminate my student debt in a time box window of six months. That may or may not happen. But what I can control are my, my behavior-based goals that says, every day I'm going to be happy that I got some education. And yeah, it cost me some money, but look, you know, look what I got here. I learned a lot of stuff and it helped me get a career, as an example. I can also be motivated for the fact that I have a job and I've got this education. Or maybe even if you don't have a job, you can just be motivated by the fact that you learned something and you had an opportunity to go to school. Uh, that's exciting. By achieving those two behavior-based goals, I'm already on my way. How about from a doing perspective? reviewing my finances, doing my best at my current job to do whatever it takes to, to, to do well and increase my income, and maybe every single day also looking for additional opportunities to increase my income, which would obviously allow me to pay off my student debt quicker. Those are five behavior-based goals that I can set and achieve every day to feel successful with the long-term goal being I'm eliminating my student debt. Winning a marathon. 
wow, wouldn't that be great if we could all just write that down on paper and go out and achieve a giant goal like this, whether it's winning a marathon or maybe it's some other sporting event you, t- you, uh, you compete in, whatever it may be. It'd be great to go out and win the thing, but I don't want to necessarily feel unsuccessful if I don't. Behavior-based goals flip this on its head and say, look, I want to win a marathon, but what can I do today to at least work towards that being something that happens in the future? Well, from a being perspective, I'm going to be grateful for my health and the fact that I can run at all. Uh, I'm going to be proud of myself that I have ambition to even set this goal to begin with, to, in, to be the type of person that likes to compete. Uh, there's two behavior-based goals that I can set and achieve every day. From a doing perspective, I can take these actions. I can make sure I complete my daily training, whatever that may be, whether it's running, strength, I don't know, depends on what marathon runners do. There's probably some kind of meal plan that can be followed and maybe outside of the gym, following top, top runners, look at, look at, looking at what their behaviors are and studying what they do to become successful. Again, five behavior-based goals that I can set and achieve every single day to work towards this giant goal of hopefully one day winning a marathon. Again, these behavior-based goals let me feel successful each and every day and help me establish the habits that get me to the point where I can hopefully one day win that marathon, that big giant goal that I've set for myself. I hope some of these examples have connected for you, maybe giving you some insight to your current goals and a, a new way of looking at what you might already be kind of planning to achieve in your life. And rather than looking at the strict traditional outcome-based approach to goal setting, you can look at setting some of these behavior-based goals that you can focus on every single day so you can create that feeling of success and probably give yourself a little bit more motivation to persist forward with whatever goals you're currently trying to achieve. I really thank you for watching this and I encourage you to send any questions in that you may have. Thanks again.